Hello everyone, I'm here with your Bible study. Tonight, our Bible study... I got my hat on the wrong page. Let me see here, guys. Tonight, our Bible study is in Judges. That is back in the Old Testament. Well, um, wants us to focus on chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, which says, Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at the time. She held court under the palm of Deborah, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. So it sounds like a woman was in charge there at one time. So, I'm going to go ahead and read all of chapter 4, and then we'll do the devotion. After Ehud died, the Israelites once again did evil in the eye of the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Javan, a king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. The commander of his army was Syria, Sarah, who lived in Harosheth, Hagam, because he had 900 iron chariots and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried to the Lord for help. Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at the time. She held court under the palm of Deborah. Between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and their Israelites came to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinom, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you ten thousand men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead the way to Mount Tabor. I will sure lure Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots, and his troops to the Kishon River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go, but if you don't go with me, I won't go. Very well, Deborah said, I will go with you, but because of the way you are going about this, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will hand Sisera, the Lord will hand Sisera over to a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh, where he summoned Zebulon and Naphtali. Ten thousand men followed him, and Deborah also went with him. Now Heber, the Kenite, had left the other Kenites. The descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zananim, near Kadesh. When they told Sarah that Barak, son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabar, Sisera gathered together his nine hundred iron chariots and all the men with him from Harasheth, Hagamon, to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor, following by ten thousand men. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and the army by the sword, and Sisera abandoned his chariot and fled on foot. But Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Harosheth Hagamim, and the troops of Sisera felt by the sword, not a man was left. Sisera, however, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Hebar the Kenite, because there were friendly relations between Jabin, king of Hazar, and the clan of Heber, the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she put a covering over him. I'm thirsty, he said, please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. No, wait. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you if anyone's here, say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him 
while he lay fast asleep, exhausted, she drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. She tricked him in there, and he fell for it. Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, the Canaanite king, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites grew stronger and stronger against Jabin and the Canaanite king until they destroyed him. And that was chapter 4, all of chapter 4 of Judges. A lot going on right there. And a lot of names. I tried my best to pronounce them and everything. A lot of hard words in that one. But a lot going on in that situation. A lot of men were killed. Not a single man was left. Alright, now let's read our devotion and see how it goes along with it. My husband and I were hiking on a beautiful summer day after a heavy rainfall. On our way down the mountain, I must allow that I would need a walking stick to navigate through the thick mud, and I wandered off the trail to find one. A few moments later, my husband presented me with a stick. It wasn't as sturdy as the one I was working to free of its dead branches, but it was such a kind gesture, gesture that I wanted to accept it. What's more, he had had a tough week at work, and I knew it was good for him to be helpful and feel appreciated. The stick was helpful until we got to a particularly steep section where the mud was deep. The stick sank and then snapped under my weight, so I chose another stick that I knew would work for me, and we continued on. The phrase that is translated in our Bible as Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, also means Deborah, woman to the rescue. The Hebrew word for woman and wife is the same. Lapidoth is a form of the word for redemption. As we mature and our spiritual life develops, we may come to understand that in our relationship with Jesus, he does not need us to stoke his ego. His powers as rescuer and redeemer are alive in our own instincts and in our own ability to act in a given situation. Pretending we need help when we don't, especially when we are doing so because it seems like the Christian thing to do, may turn us away from the redemptive qualities in our personal connection to Christ. Elizabeth Byrne Degar All right, guys. Let's see what our homework is for tonight. Begin your day with this prayerful question. How is Christ the Redeemer alive within my own discernment and judgment today? So what we do is go through the day knowing Jesus is with us and he is there right there in the room with us, but we just can't see him, but he's there. And go about your day doing what you will. Knowing Jesus is there will probably make most of us act a little different to be a little better. And at that night, reflect on what you have done that day because Jesus was there with you. And think about that every day, that Jesus is with us every day. We just can't see him. And let's see how that goes, okay? So our next Bible reading will be in 2 Corinthians. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Bye, guys.